almost everyone has used a ladder at one time or another. And when you need a ladder, you can almost count on one being nearby, and that it will be easy to set up and use. Unfortunately, falling from a ladder is also easy, and the injuries that result are often very serious. In fact, over 40,000 deaths and disabling injuries result from ladder falls each year in the United States alone. The danger of falling from a ladder is very real, and no one should ever take working with ladders for granted. In this program, we will be taking a look at how to use portable and fixed ladders safely. Nearly all ladder accidents can be prevented by starting off with a right ladder for the job, inspecting the ladder to make sure it's in good condition, taking the time for proper ladder setup, and by following a few simple rules for climbing the ladder and working from it safely. Using the right ladder depends upon what the job is and where you'll be doing it. But to begin with, you need to know that there are situations where there may be no right ladder. For example, if you will be working at a height for an extended period of time, if you will need to use a lot of equipment, or equipment that is awkward or heavy, or if you need both hands to exert a lot of force, you probably need to use a mobile lift or some type of scaffolding. But remember, before you use this equipment, make sure you are trained and thoroughly familiar with it. And in situations where you cannot get a stable, firm base of support for a ladder, do not use one. You'll have to find some other way to get the job done. For those jobs where you can use a ladder, the support available for the ladder is usually the key factor in using the right one. Step ladders need bottom support for all four legs. Straight and extension ladders must have both rails firmly supported, both at the top and at the base. If only one top rail can be fully supported, you may be able to find a single support attachment for the ladder, or you might have on hand a ladder designed for single top support use. If you cannot get the required top support for a straight or extension ladder, you will need to use a self-supporting ladder, like a step ladder or a mobile ladder stand. Another factor to consider is what you will be using the ladder for. If you need to simply climb to the next working level, it's best to use a ladder stand with rails, a straight ladder, or an extension ladder. Many accidents happen when someone tries to climb from a step ladder to a working surface or vice versa. As you leave the ladder, your trailing foot tends to push sideways against the ladder with a lot of force often enough to cause the ladder to wobble, and sometimes enough to topple the ladder. For many quick jobs, it is perfectly okay to work from a common step ladder or extension ladder, but for jobs that are more involved, use a platform ladder or ladder stand if one is available. They give you a larger, more stable work platform. Now, there are very specific situations when using the right ladder means choosing a ladder made from specific materials. If you will be working with or near live electrical circuits, avoid using a metal ladder, even if you are just changing a light bulb. And don't forget, a wooden ladder which is wet can be just as dangerous as a metal ladder. If you will be using a ladder where strong chemicals are present, a wooden ladder is the safest choice. Aluminum ladders may be damaged by corrosives, fiberglass ladders by solvents. Using the right ladder always means making certain it is the correct length. Exactly how much ladder you need depends on what kind of ladder you are using and what you are using it for. If you are using a ladder to climb to another level, it must extend three feet beyond the upper supporting surface unless special provisions have been made for something else to grasp and steady yourself. If you will be working from a step ladder, it must be long enough to let you reach the work without climbing higher than the second step from the top. On a straight or extension ladder, 
you must be able to reach where you need to without going higher than the third rung from the top. The point is, you should make sure you are taking enough ladder out to the job with you. On the other hand, you want to avoid taking way too much ladder. You will only make the job of transporting and setting up the ladder harder, and possibly more hazardous. Ladders which are far too long may put you out of easy reach of the work once the ladder is set up. Any ladder has to be strong enough. Before you use any portable ladder, make sure its rated capacity is enough to support you and whatever you take up with you. Portable ladders range from Type 3 light duty, rated for 200 pounds, to Type 1A extra heavy duty, rated for 300 pounds. Check the manufacturer's label and use a Type 1A whenever possible. When the right ladder is not handy, people sometimes try to improvise. Don't do it. You'll almost always wind up climbing on something that is dangerously weak or unstable. Never make a ladder longer by lashing sections together. Never stand one or more feet of any ladder on a box, barrel, or other object. Avoid using single sections of extension ladders because they are not stable enough on their own. And never misuse a step ladder by setting it up as a straight ladder. A job-made ladder can be very dangerous if it has not been properly constructed. Use a job-made ladder only if it has been cleared by someone who has the authority to do so. Unfortunately, any ladder can weaken and fail. Rungs break. Hardware loosens. A brace gives way. It happens far more frequently than you might think. You should always inspect a ladder before you use it. Wooden ladders should never be painted or coated with anything that prevents you from spotting flaws. Inspect a step ladder's side rails and steps. You should never use a ladder if any of the steps or side rails is bowed or cracked. And if you find any corrosion that might have weakened a metal part, do not use the ladder. Check all connections between steps and side rails. There should be no looseness and no damaged or missing screws, bolts, rivets, or other hardware. The bracing on the back of the ladder must be in good condition in order to maintain ladder stability and strength. Both spreaders must be straight and firmly attached. Make sure they lock securely in the open position. If any of the feet have slip-resistant pads, all four should have them. Take a second to check the pads to see they're not loose or worn out. While you are performing the inspection, make sure the ladder is free of grease, oil, or any other material that might cause you or the ladder to slip. Portable straight ladders and extension ladders have similar things to look for. You must make sure the side rails, rungs, and hardware are tight and in perfect shape. Straight and extension ladders must have slip-resistant safety feet. Make sure they are in good condition. If the ladder has adjustable feet, these certainly are not jammed in a position that will prevent the ladder from being set up properly. If the top ends of an aluminum straight ladder or extension ladder are not rounded, they should be protected by plastic end caps. These must be there to protect you and any surface the ladder rests on. Extension ladders require a little more effort to inspect, but take the time. Test the rung locks and springs before the ladder is erected to make sure the mechanism works and that the ladder has been assembled properly. The rung locks will not engage if the ladder has been misassembled. Work the rope and pulley to be sure they move freely and the no parts are loose, worn, or broken. Don't trust a ladder you haven't inspected and never try to make do with a ladder that may fail you. If a ladder has a problem, follow your company's procedure for fixing the problem or taking the ladder out of service. Correct storage will prevent some of the problems that turn up on inspections. A ladder should be clean and dry before you put it away. Keep metal parts like springs and hinges well lubricated. Store ladders in a clean, dry place. To prevent bowing, Hang a ladder by a side rail on supports about six feet apart 
and don't store things on the ladder. Many people hurt themselves because they do not realize that proper ladder setup is always a part of any job involving a ladder. The fact is, no matter how quickly a job can be done, there's always time to fall. Setting up a ladder begins with getting it out to the job site. You can probably carry it by yourself if the ladder is no more than eight feet long and if it can be carried with one hand. Hold it by one of its side reels so the ladder's front is slightly higher than the back and its weight is balanced. And when you are changing direction, make certain the ends of the ladder won't hit anything as they swing. Do not carry a ladder vertically. Not only is it harder to control, but you have to divide your time between watching your footing and keeping an eye out for hazards overhead, like electrical lines. If the ladder is too heavy or too long to handle comfortably, get someone to help. It's very easy to injure your back if you have to strain to get a job done. Raising a straight or extension ladder is often a two-person job. One person should brace the foot of the ladder while the other starts at the top of the ladder and walks it up rung by rung. Once the ladder is nearly vertical, with it leaning slightly toward the structure that will support it, extend the ladder to the proper height. Finally, lower the ladder into position carefully. Remember, for any ladder to be secure, it needs to have stable support. Be wary of loose gravel, especially if it is layered over a hard surface. Take the time to clear it away so the ladder is resting on a solid surface. And if you are using a straight or extension ladder, remember, both rails must be stable on both top and bottom supports. On a step ladder, double check and make sure both spreaders are fully extended and locked into place. Rock any ladder before you get on it just to make sure it is stable. Straight and extension ladders are strongest and most stable when they are set up at about a 75 degree angle. Use the 4 to 1 rule when setting up a straight or extension ladder. For every 4 feet of working length, the base should be set out 1 foot. The working length of a ladder is the distance along the ladder from the bottom to the top support. So. When a 20-foot ladder is set up against a wall, its base should be 5 feet from the wall, 4 to 1. An easy way to check the 4 to 1 rule is to stand in front of the ladder with your toes touching its base. Stretch your arms out straight. Your fingertips should just touch the ladder. Sometimes there are situations where you may need to take the time and trouble to secure the ladder. If you are going to work from a ladder for any extended period, if you will be climbing it repeatedly, or if the ladder will be left in place unattended. It's a good idea to block the feet and tie the ladder off at the top whenever possible. If the ladder is near any type of traffic, you need to be sure that no one can bump into the ladder or knock it over. Secure the ladder or barricade the area. Doors which can open into a ladder pose a very common threat. Make sure doors are locked and under your control whenever possible or at the very least barricaded. Do not rely on just a sign posted on the door to keep you safe. If you will be working from the ladder, there is more to ladder placement than just making sure the ladder won't tip. You need to set the ladder up so that you can reach the work without putting yourself in a position where you might lose your balance. You should never have to stretch sideways far enough to put your belt buckle outside the side wheel and you should never be forced to twist backwards in order to get the job done. These positions can cause you to lose your balance or cause the ladder to tip. Either way, you lose. Okay, we've spent a lot of time on how you can prevent accidents before you get on a ladder. Make sure you've got the right ladder, that it's in good shape, and that it is set up to avoid unsafe conditions. If you cover these three areas, you will have eliminated the causes of 40% of all ladder accidents. Now 
Now let's talk about how to eliminate the accidents that happen to people while climbing and working from ladders. Probably the single most important thing you can do to ensure your safety while climbing a ladder is to use both hands. Tools and materials should be securely attached to your belt or hoisted up, not hand carried, because you need both hands free to grasp the ladder. Before you take the first step, check the bottom of your shoes to make sure they aren't slippery. You need as much traction as you can get when you're on the ladder. While you are climbing, climb deliberately and not too fast. Always maintain one firm handhold while you reach for the next. As we've already said, don't climb higher than the third rung on a straight ladder or extension ladder, and no higher than the second step from the top of a step ladder. Be especially alert and deliberate when getting on and off a ladder. That's where a lot of people get hurt. Obviously, any misstep at the top of a ladder can result in a serious fall. But accidents happen at the bottom as well. Before you step off, always check the ground for anything that might cause you to stumble and twist an ankle. In most situations, always climb alone. Few ladders are designed for more than one person at a time and most of these are fixed ladders. The combined weight and motion of more than one climber can cause a ladder to shake, twist, or even break. When working from a ladder, remember the rules. Never twist backwards. Don't try to reach too high. And keep your belt buckle within the rails. Be extremely careful in any situation where an object like a tool might slip and throw you off balance. It's a good idea to keep one hand in firm contact with the ladder whenever possible. Now, if you climb a ladder and find that it's not positioned to let you work safely, don't overreach. And don't try to move the ladder while you're on it. Always climb down and move the ladder, even if it takes longer than doing the job itself. Most of what we've said about climbing a portable ladder also applies to fixed ladders. However, you may be required to wear a climbing safety device attached to the fixed ladder. Before you climb, slide the carrier up and down to make sure it slides smoothly on the cable or rail. Then give it a sharp pull to make sure the braking mechanism works. If you have any questions about using the device, ask. Ladder inspection must be done as you climb. Look ahead for loose parts, broken anchor points, and corrosion. Since fixed ladders are often quite high, it's important to rest when you need to. Every time you use a ladder, no matter how high you're climbing or how long you'll be up there, think about what you are doing and make the time to do it safely. Be sure you've got the right ladder. Plan the ladder setup to give you the safest working conditions. Always climb using both hands. And never violate the belt buckle rule by overreaching. Ladders are easy to use and the rule is simple. If you follow these safe practices all the time without exception, your chances of having a serious ladder accident will be just about zero.